What do you see? Look hard. Let me zoom in a little. What do you see? Look hard. What do you see? Look even harder. I don't think this was here yesterday. Oh, well, the quarter. Yeah, okay, that's cool. No, this stuff. Welcome back to Skatomaville. And have I got some things to show you. We're gonna talk about preparation, or it could be preparation, or getting ready before you have any solid evidence. Think about that for a second. Quarter, I don't know, that's cool. That might have been there for a long time, but that green stuff? That green, that just showed up since the rain. Again, what do you see? Days and days and days of planning, preparing, and hoping, and working hard. You see, packing in spite of an airstream. You see, parts that were ordered in advance of something showing up. You might have heard the phrase, fake it until you make it. I'm not talking about faking it. I'm saying practice. Get your butt ready. Put in the effort. Define preparation. Preparation is the action or process of making ready or being made ready for use or consideration to work out the details of, to plan in advance. For me, being prepared was thinking about what was I going to do? Something about awareness and writing some notes. What did I think about awareness and how would you get there and what were the tools? And then putting in the hard work, you watch that whole thing. That produced this. Now, this prepares me to go on TV and to be able to be in magazines and be in front of people with they believe something I have to say or at least are willing to test it. So basically, preparation is getting ready for something in advance. And you know where it starts? Right here in your thinking. It starts with commitment and then doing the hard work and then finding your scotomas, like with uh, being poisoned recently. Killed my gut with lectins from tomatoes and peppers. Ugh. In the background, all summer, there's been sort of a community garden here. But it wasn't until I talked to Lorena, the owner, uh, this morning that she said she was sick just a couple weeks ago. I was like, that's funny, I was sick too. She said, oh, I ate some zucchini out of the garden. I said, oh, I ate tomatoes out of the garden. And we both found out someone had been using Roundup. Aha, that'll cause you to have leaky gut. Leaky gut. Yeah, <laughs> scotoma. Yeah, that was an interesting one, found out after the fact. When you intend to design a life and not be handed, no, not accept what you've been handed, when you want to move toward that life, you had to, had to, had to, <laughs> no, it's necessary to act as if Jack Canfield would say from Chicken Soup for the Soul, act as if that life were already here. Practice the life you want in the future, now. Imagine how you'd be there and do it now. So this is uncured, apple smoked, bacon bits. Don't give up an opportunity to do the hard thing. Yeah. 
Much better. You remember this little trick, cutting off the end of the eggs? Well, I do that even if I've still got a big refrigerator. Why? It's my mindset of acting as if. Steamed chai. Doing the hard thing can often mean making a decent meal even when you're going to sit down and eat it alone. Because you need to prepare your mind <laughs> and your habits. No matter what your situation or how modest your means are, develop your habits in advance. That's preparing, right? You're ready when you get there. So preparation means to Look at that. Preparing to me, in my mind, is trying to figure out why preparation to me oftentimes includes a whole bunch of failure. What is with this? Preparation to me means bucket full of failure. Numerous times not knowing what you're going to say. Preparation for me means starting in here, acting as if, doing the work, figuring it out, not always knowing where you're going, but putting in the effort and dealing with distractions like heaters coming on. Preparation means to put in the effort in advance of the outcome you want. And you've been watching me do it which means you can mimic me to find your scotomas, to take your strengths, to find out how you offend people, what's holding you back, where your obstacles are. You've learned by watching me how to pivot. And we're gonna show you over the next few weeks some very interesting things because maybe we've failed four prior times to acquire an Airstream, but we're packing, come on. But we're packing as if we're going to go up. We're talking about preparation. Seeing the life you want in advance of the final evidence, right? You can't, you can't see the view until you get to the top. Well, this is a view of the land that we are uh, making an offer on. Mm -hmm. And... It's a National Historic out here, the gorge. I'll show you the valley. I'm quite familiar with hard work, commitment, and disappointment. Three years ago, we made an offer on a piece of land. I uh, worked hard at clearing the land. in order to do the topography. Uh, driveway is going to go in through here, so we're going to come off of the main road either direction and come right down through here and down around the corner. So today I'm going to plot all of this land. So I've got an X, Y, and Z so I could lay up all of the architecture to take it to the planning and building department and to be sure that they would allow us to build what we wanted on that land. As it turns out, for many factors beyond our control, we did not build on that land. And it turns out that was actually a good thing because now the land we're looking at is pretty incredible and allows us to do far more of what we had envisioned. I shared in an earlier section of volume one that Angelina and I like to play board games. We uh, love to refine our critical thinking skills. Before I share with you the preparations we're making where we're going in more detail, I'd like you to understand sort of the foundation 
for our efforts. And to do that, I have to tell you a bit of a story. I grew up living about five or six miles out of town. Both of my parents worked and my stepbrother and stepsister, I took care of most of the time when I wasn't in school. And so I didn't have transportation. Fortunately, we had a bookmobile. So I could foster my education, if you will, by devouring everything I could find in the shelves of that bookmobile. Fast forward to today, that's called your mobile device. You have access to the internet. You don't rely on the choices of a librarian for your education and for your development of critical thinking skills. But aha, <laughs> there's a scotoma in there. It used to be that libraries had main stacks full of, oh, they had science and, and I would be very interested in the science stuff, but I would also kind of select a little bit from history or biographies or the bookmobile would come out with sort of a selection of things, you see? and. This is what they would deliver to my driveway, but to somebody else in a different van or a different bus, they might get a different selection from the stacks. And so their worldview would be slightly different than mine. It could have a very similar proportions of material, but in fact, it could be completely diametrically opposed, left and right, if you will. And depending on what you were reading at what time, you would see things not the way they are, but the way you are, right? So today we have a dramatic issue with confirmation bias, with not having access to the full information. Onus probande. Here's my evidence of that. Google has nine data centers in North America. And, and you think if you go to Google, you see what's on the internet. Well, it's not true. Google can only store 4%, 4% of what's on the internet. That means that you're not seeing 96%. Most everything is not even on your board. When your browser, <laughs> you're, you, you don't get a bookmobile today. You get a web browser. You go to the internet through your social media and you get a select view. And here's how it gets really skewed. I would go out to that bookmobile at the end of my driveway and I would ask that driver, hey, do you have any more of the Danny Dunn series, the science books for young boys? And he would say, no, I, I, I brought you all of them. But that's because the others were out in other bookmobiles. So I didn't get to see them because they were already somewhere else. So he would say, well, how about if I see what I can find you and all, since you've already read these, uh, next week I'll bring you some of these others. And so the selection of books I would get would be based on the driver asking a librarian who went to see what was in the stacks and would hand that to me. They were recommending. Today, algorithms do that for you. You don't get what it is that is a accurate proportion, worldview, a way of seeing what's really on the table. You see what is interpreted through multiple machine learning algorithms, little black boxes. Meaning, your worldview is going to be substantially different than someone else. And why is that? It's because of click bias. And click bias comes into the picture because of the demand for Google and the other social media platforms to make a profit. You see, the bias comes in because they have to consider what is profitable to be put in their servers. 96% of it doesn't even show up in there. What happens when you click 
they're watching, recording all of your activity, the things that they think you like. And when you choose something, they will say to you, oh, you like that. Let's give you a little more because if you notice on the real estate of your search results page or your YouTube selections, you have recommended things in the sidebar, right? And at the top and at the bottom. The more you click, the more they want you to stay in their platform so they serve you up more things similar. It's called confirmation bias, right? It's them giving you a narrower world view so you choose what's on their menu. You don't go out looking for what the world might actually have in store for you. You don't go playing with all the pieces when you go to do your preparation. So I'm trying to say, be aware that this bias is built into your results and the recommenders want you to stick with them. So they will build search results based on popular, precise, but probably not accurate because it's not reflecting the way it really is. And so you end up in a walled garden where you believe your point of view matters when you're not seeing the whole picture you become polarized and that's what we have going on in our country today okay that's a lot to get to the point of saying look confirmation bias narrows your worldview be aware that your browser the recommenders that are out there are not serving you up everything They've got limited real estate, just like a bookmobile, meaning you're not seeing everything. Go ask better questions. Go look for what they're not saying. It's worth thinking about. Now, let me share with you something I put together for Angelina so that you can then see a bit broader picture where even I am learning to go in the fog and the clouds. You have proven the love that you have for the project. Um, the love that you have. And the project is not about a thing. It's about all the women that are involved in the project. And you never gave up. Uh, you, have, you have endured no matter what. And... It speaks so loud, Angelina, of, of your heart, um, of your honesty, your integrity, and everything that you said from the very beginning, that it wasn't about you, that it was about everyone else. It was about us, about everyone in that project. Hi, I am Angelina Music. And I want to share with you, this year has been a lot of work. You just saw how much work it took me to get on those rocks and keep my balance and try not to fall over. But I persevered. I am sure resilience is one of your words this year for you to hang in there through 2020 with all of its uncertainties. I want to provide you with some certainty through a few events coming up. Saturday, November 14th in Phoenix, Arizona, not in the Pacific Northwest where I am right now, we have the Enterprising Women's Conference. That Saturday, November 14th, downtown Phoenix, a hundred women are coming together to learn to have fun and to network. The COVID testing and COVID antibody testing provided by Dr. Kevin Chan of Pineapple Health. So this is a safe event for all of us to enjoy together. So though only a hundred local women are going to be physically at this event, I'm going to be live streaming the contents of the conference. So what this means for you as an attendee is that you will have the opportunity to introduce yourself and share a did you know about your product or service that we didn't know we should think about. Maybe that we have wrong or have a different conclusion. It's your opportunity to shine and be promoted locally and beyond. 
in between the sessions of me teaching on how to market, to grow, to refine and brand your business, so you're well prepared for 2021, I'm gonna be interviewing women who are part of the Enterprising Women's Project, the book that has come together and will continue to come together through 2021. These women, I will interview their backstories so we understand from their backstory why they are doing the business that they are right now, or what I call monetizing their passion. So we will learn and glean from them and they too are going to share did you know insights for us to be better educated about things that we just might have wrong, incomplete or different opinions. Now, what is going to happen beyond the conference that day from five to seven, we will have a beautiful reception and we will have booths from the ladies who are attending this conference as well. We'll also have a private screening of the movie Social Dilemma. We've got permission from Netflix to do so, and we're really excited about that. So that's from five until seven. Beyond the Enterprising Women's Conference in December, I will be twice on the Sonora Living Show, providing the opportunity for locals to get a chance to know me, like me, and trust me as I prepare for our 2021 Enterprising Women Conference and Expo, March 5th through 7th. It starts November 14th and it continues to March which means there are more of you that will have an opportunity to be a vendor at the expo and perhaps speak at the conference. April 23rd through 25th, we have the Wellness by Choice Expo. Both of these events in March and April are to support vendors and entrepreneurs that help us live smarter and healthier and happier. It is a huge event and we have two months of those events. In between the end of the conference and March and April, every Monday starting January 25th, I will be on the Sonorum Living Show, which is ADC 15 at 9 a.m. in the morning right now in Phoenix Magazine and Phoenix Home and Garden. Pick up an issue because we are in a double page spread in the October and November issue. And for those women who want to join the Enterprising Women's Project, you will be recognized in Inc. Magazine in the March and April issue. Doesn't this just keep getting better? Well, these women who currently are in the project that you will meet, who will speak on November 14th, were recognized by me in Entrepreneur Magazine, March of 2020. So yes, this is about me investing in enterprising women, promoting entrepreneurship, and helping women better fund their futures forward through personal growth and professional growth. And before we leave, the reason we're in the Pacific Northwest is because 2021 is the launch of the Enterprising Women's Retreats. More details on that because I know you're gonna wanna know where you can go to get away for three or five days to enjoy a spa-like environment while working on your mind, your body, and your business. And now you've seen both sides of our story, where preparation is part of the long game. I don't remember my line. It's a long game because you have to figure out all of your scotomas that you have. Your backstory and preparation helps you be resilient and nimble and adaptable and things that you didn't even know were going to happen. What's my line anyway? So, I am terrible at this stuff. I have to ad-lib it completely. So what, we, what do we want to tell them? So we really hope that you uh, have got a few insights on who we are and that it'll encourage you to get out of Skatomaville. Skatomaville. That's not my line. <laughs>